We're back here for the Back Chat Basketball Show uh, episode, maybe eight. I've lost count. Oh, eight? Yeah, oh, got it go right. Eight. Sounds impressive. Yeah, uh, of course. Greg Heyer sometimes here isn't. It is. But we have a we have something even better. To yeah. a taller, more <laughs> established basketball player. Yeah, <laughs> that's right. Uh, Brady Manick, welcome to the Back Chat Basketball Thank you. Show. Thanks for coming in. Yeah. Um, we haven't had um, we had John really. We had a coach. We haven't had a current uh, Wildcats player, so you're our first for this season. Uh, so thanks for coming on. We d- we don't really um, want to talk about the Wildcats, if we're being honest. I don't know if the Wildcats media people are happy about that, <laughs> but um, you know, I'm sure you do Wildcats media all the time. But uh, first question we're going to ask you that we ask every guest is your greatest sporting achievement ever. So for you personally, and it can't be on the basketball court because look, we know you're a basketballer. You've done plenty of things on the court, college, now in the NBL. What's something that you've done off the basketball court that you're incredibly incredibly pl- uh, proud of? Um, I think a uh, big one would be uh, I was an academic All American. Academic All American. Third team. Third team. Third team. <laughs> what yeah. does that mean? Exactly. I don't know. <laughs> that was, it sounds very there's impressive. Like one, two, and three, and there's like five guys on a team, and uh, I guess I had good enough grades and. Right. Coach kind of pushed for it, so I got third team academic all American. So in academics, ago. there you go. We're we talking a specific subject that you dominated in no. or across the board. <laughs> no, across the board. It's funny. Yeah. I I had a look on Reddit just to see what people were talking about you, and um, someone questioned like, "What's Brady majoring in?" And someone's like, "I don't think he's majoring in anything. It's just just there." Yeah. So <laughs> the the big story behind that part, I know exactly what they're talking about. So I got a uh, management degree at uh, Oklahoma. And I started my graduating three and a half and got started. My master's program is online. COVID happened. So I got to do it online and didn't transfer with me. Right. So they said you can start over and just redo that last semester you had or you could try something else. So I I tried something else and I just went in thinking I'm just going to play basketball when I transferred to North Carolina and I was basically just playing basketball I was going to these classes that I'd never majored in never <laughs> taken and these kids are taking them to graduate or they're yep. incoming freshmen and I'm just sitting there like I've graduated I have <laughs> no business being here yeah. so you're like a 22 year old one and done just yes. cruising around North Carolina yeah so I was <laughs> going to these classes and I had no business being here. <laughs> <laughs> what sort of classes were these like just uh, communications right um, I've done a communications degree it's yeah easy there as, was so. a uh, like a like a health class, um, some war classes, a um, couple like psychology online classes. So it was, yep. it was a little mix of everything. Yeah. 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 Nice. Um, and so you, you played in North Carolina. Tell us um, about that and, and sort of moving to North Carolina, um, the college and, and sort of what was involved with that. Yeah, so for me, it was a, it was a weird experience of getting there because I entered the portal through after a coach and change just wanted to have all my options laid out and when I when I decided to finally you know start calling like answering the phone talking to people I didn't really have an idea of where I wanted to go what I and I had all these schools calling and I just didn't didn't feel right the situation didn't feel right and the big reason for me to leave would have been I wanted to get past the round of 32 in March Madness yep and that's just the second weekend. It's going to the Sweet 16. That's what I wanted to do. And uh, I didn't want to be an eight seed because uh, you play eight, nine, then you turn around and play a one seed. And for me, I I don't know how. I, I still tell him this day uh, how Coach Davis got me there. I, I don't know. I don't I don't know the reason behind it. I told him I, I didn't really care that it was North Carolina. I, I wanted to come somewhere. I wanted to win. I wanted to be helpful. Um, so you're going to have to – figure out a way to, to get me to come there and he did a really good job of recruiting me um we had everything mapped out on how they can help me how I can help them and it, it all worked out and obviously it was, a, it was a big big thing but if you look back at it um we were the eight seed and we played the <laughs> one seed but we got to the sweet 16 and then some so yeah it all worked out in the end but it was uh it was definitely a, a crazy because I'd never been to that state before. So I grew up Oklahoma and had never been in North Carolina. And I didn't go on a visit. I said I wasn't going on any visits. I didn't care what the academics looked like. I didn't care what the campus looked like. <laughs> I just wanted to go play basketball. And I felt like I had the right to do that after graduating and already playing four years. So 
I mean, I I just packed up and moved. Yeah. What was that experience like getting onto a new college team after you said playing four years? Because college, it's not pros yet. Players don't transfer around a lot at your age. Was there a weird sensation coming in as almost like an older recruit into a college ecosystem? Yeah, it's 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 odd. Um, for for me, uh, I'm very thankful of how they they took me in. Uh, they they knew I only had one year left. They knew I could only be a part of the team for one year and. You know the guys really bought into me being there, and they they accepted me pretty fast. It was it was really cool. Um, you know, usually guys get there, they're they're either transferring, they got one, two, three, maybe they're freshmen, they got four years of eligibility, but it's rare that you have a guy because of COVID that had already played his four years and then gets another. So for them to you know accept me and uh, just kind of make me a part of the team really fast, it was it was really cool and very special. Yeah. You mentioned being a number eight seed in the tournament. You guys went through to the final, but you got to play in that semi-final against Coach K in his last game. Yeah. What was that day like? Obviously, Coach K is one of the greatest coaches in the history of basketball. What was it like being part of that on top of it being the biggest rivalry in college sports as well? Yeah, so for that game, it was the first time uh, Duke UNC have ever played in the tournament. And uh, going into that game, um, I feel like the buildup of the whole season of it being his last year was 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 it was just big. But going into that game, I think the rivalry for for the players, uh, maybe for the fans, but for the for the players, I feel like the rivalry, the the Coach K thing, um, all that kind of went out the window. I think everybody was really just excited to be at the Final Four, and it was another game trying to get to the national championship. I don't think the players looked at it as much as, oh, it's just another Duke-UNC game or the rivalry. I think it was more focused on us being one game away from Nash championship. What's a Tar Heel? Great question. <laughs> <laughs> um, I I couldn't tell you, to be <laughs> honest. Uh, it, it, something with uh, the foot and the, the, the tar on the foot, I, don't, I really don't know. <laughs> so you're going to have to help me. I, I just was looking, and I, obviously I know, like, of UNC, obviously, and, like, then I saw Tar Heels, and it's one of those names you hear, like, oh yeah, UNC Tar Heels. But then I was like, what's a Tar Heel? And um, I do, do you know, Ben? I've got and no idea. I think I'm it asking dates, to Google it. It probably speak. dates back a very long time ago <laughs> yeah. of why. Yeah. But I could. <laughs> That's fine. Um, so here we go. It dates back to a long time ago when North Carolina was a leading producer of steel in the Navy. So I don't know how that. that links to being a Tar Heel, but. Nice. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Yeah, so maybe uh, I thought that would be something that would be given like an orientation pack, you know, about well, the school. <laughs> well, <laughs> probably so. But <laughs> when you're a fifth year person, you don't <laughs> yeah, go to orientation. Okay. Yeah, 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 that's right. Um, so I've I asked around some people um, that sort of know if there was anything I should ask you about. Um, one of the first things that came up was that you really like Steve Irwin. <laughs> I mean, I would say, yeah, I grew up watching Steve Irwin. I, I apparently over here, he wasn't that big of a deal. But, uh, yeah, uh, I was always on TV. My parents, uh, Animal Planet, it's always it's what we yeah. watched. Uh, and then, fun <laughs> fact, he he died on my birthday. So oh, wow. uh, I was I n- turned eight, probably one of the worst birthdays ever. Because <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. we that saw that photo of you up in Darwin. Was it with the croc? Was that something you just knew you had to do? Yeah, when you got I, up was, to Darwin? I was uh, I was super excited to do it. Uh, I was actually the only one to do it. but uh, yeah, Only was, one on the Wildcats team. Yeah, no one only one to, to go. In there. But it was it was a lot of fun. Uh, yeah, we got to be a little little too close to him and it was <laughs> it was really cool it was a fun experience uh they they did a really great uh tour for for us and it was went by pretty quick but it was, it was a lot of fun the um uh, when i've been around uh when they've taken sort of the imports around for various animal activities in perth usually they're all terrified of spiders and and things like that but i mean if you're getting face to face with a croc it's yeah a um so we also did the the caversham one here and in perth and uh, i was down to hold anything touch anything <laughs> like i was i was okay with it and we went there with me Corey, and uh Tayshawn, and they asked if we wanted to hold something and i immediately I was like, yeah, let's do <laughs> it. Everything. Let's do it. So I, I, I made sure I, I held everything that they'd let me. So. What's Oklahoma like? Are there dangerous animals and beasts over in Oklahoma that we need to know about? I mean, yeah, I feel like there's mountain lions, <laughs> bears. <laughs> uh, I don't know. There's, it's not nothing like over here, but. I don't know. Bear sounds pretty intimidating. Yeah, I don't think I want any I, part of that. I Not usually something just walking around. <laughs> uh, but, yeah, the 
I feel like you go anywhere in the world, there's something's going to kill you. So anywhere else in Perth that you've visited that you're, you, you've been a fan of. So how, you've been in Perth for what, six months? Mm, four. Four months. Yeah. yeah. So what's, what's it been like for you being in Perth? It's been good. Um, you know, being around the beach, um, had my family come through, uh, mom's here right now, aunt's here right now, but yeah, it's been good. We drive around, uh, there's not too much to do, or if there is something to do, it's probably a little bit farther than my liking since I have to drive, so <laughs> they're usually not doing it, but uh, yeah, it's been good. Um, I don't think we've really gone anywhere. We went, me and my dad went to the, the Mint while he was here. We, okay. my, my family's into coins. So <laughs> All right, okay. We decided to go in and look at some coins. Yeah, good. Um, when I know when Bryce first moved over to Perth, um, one of his first days, he filled up the uh, the car with diesel. Oh no! And drove. I think it was like the the team car that they lent him until they sorted something out. Um, have you had any issues with uh, sort of? <laughs> no. <laughs> like so that? we actually have stickers on our cars that say <laughs> uh, "Unleaded Only." Yeah. So uh, I think he had the same. But yeah, he might have. But uh, <laughs> yeah, get here the first few days. Driving was a little yeah. little odd. Uh, I never experienced the other side or really anything like that. So uh, I I took a few days to to watch and (laughs) then I decided to get after it and I've been doing great. I was going to say, coming from America to here is probably a bit more chill. I remember one day I was in LA and I got a car driving down the seven lane freeways going the wrong side of the road. There's nothing that scared me more than doing that yeah uh the first mistake was being in la <laughs> <laughs> yeah could have gone anywhere else but la so yeah. um let's let's talk about some more um stuff with you in perth uh the kings of leon came to town oh, yeah. just recently um i saw a photo uh of the drummer wearing a wildcats jersey oh, and yeah. the photo was taken in reverse so it said 24 on it and so the, there was a post on Facebook that was like, oh, they're wearing Jesse Wagstaff's, um, <laughs> his jersey, but their photo, was, it was flipped. Yeah. They could have read that Perth was spelled backwards. How did that all come about with the um, the drummer wearing your jersey? It was jersey? actually super crazy. Uh, we were headed to Adelaide, and I get a message on Twitter. Uh, I usually don't check them, but I did. And I saw the blue check mark. I checked how many followers. I, I started scrolling, and, and you look at the... You look at their bio, you look at their tweets, and I, I still couldn't figure out who this person was. And right. and I was I was scrolling. I'd be like, uh, "Thank you, Sydney. Thank you, Adelaide, for this for the show." And yep. and I just couldn't understand what was going on. And <laughs> the bio said drummer, so I was like, "Obviously, he's a drummer. Somebody." Oh, so it didn't say what band? S- yeah, I just said drummer. <laughs> Did you think you were getting catfished or something? Yeah, or something? so I, it could have been like a Texas fan or something. <laughs> for all I know. So yeah. I decided. To Google the name, figured out who he was, and uh, in in his message, he had said that he was born in Oklahoma and right. uh, had been a Sooners fan. So I reached out and said if I wanted to come Wednesday to let him know, and I just asked him I'll come, but you got to get some more for some of the teammates. Yeah. I'm not showing up to a concert by myself. Like that's, <laughs> that's just weird. Still not sure if it's that's just be. weird. Yeah, yeah. So uh, I told the guys that they could come with me, and uh, I I told them. I really don't know anything about this. I, they were leaving me tickets, <laughs> and I said, if they're not there, I guess we'll just do something else. And <laughs> we ended up, they were there, we went in, uh, we got to meet them, and it was a super fun night. Were yeah. you a Kings of Leon fan? Did you know much about I the I knew band? two songs. Yes. Uh, I'm slowly learning more, <laughs> but uh, yeah, it was it was a lot of fun. I was uh, So I'm big into country music, so for me to go to that, uh, kind of put a different genre, and uh, it was it was a lot of fun. I, I definitely enjoyed it, and I'm definitely a fan now. Yeah. Well, they've got one Perth fan for life then. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Um, something that we were talking about last week on our basketball show was the um, the too small celebration. Um, you know, like if they like bump, you're bumping down the post, yeah. and yeah. Yeah. Um, <laughs> what's your What's your take on the too small celebration? Because I am a big fan. I, I oh, I'm it. I'm not a fan of not any a fan? celebration. Really? No. So you don't even have a go to that you you know? No, a I, flex. It just kind of it wink just someone? comes out. It's usually just some kind of yell, but yeah. I don't really know Sh- showing up somebody else. Yeah. Can you ever remember a three that you've hit where you lost control and went a bit uh, yeah. over the top? Is there yeah. one memory? There that was comes to one. Mind? Uh, that Duke game you're talking about. I lost a little bit of control. <laughs> it was uh, said a few choice words, but it was it was a good it was a good moment. For sure, it must be satisfying shooting in front of the opposition bench in the corner and oh, yeah. and, and draining it. Bit of chatter back as you're as you're running. No, the no chatter back. But uh, I've had a 
few uh, the last few years of uh, get hot. Uh, that's the best when you hit that corner three and they have to call a timeout. That's a, <laughs> yeah. that's a good feeling. You go yep. to the, go to the timeout feeling good. But yeah, there's been a been a lot of threes over the years. You've had a pretty good run playing for North Carolina and Oklahoma, two of the bigger colleges, which means the two of them are hated colleges. Is there one away fan base or one away arena that stands out above all else in terms of the stick and the grief that you copped? Yeah, um, every place I would say is a little bit different. Um, some places it's just like so. Let's say Kansas, for example, it's so loud you you don't hear what they're actually saying they're just people are just yelling but you get into a place like let's say texas tech uh one of my favorites was west virginia people are just mean and it's, it's, it's <laughs> awesome they they say some crazy stuff some stuff that you probably aren't even allowed to say and they're saying it and uh it, it's 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 a lot of fun when you go into those places and you have a good game um you know just be in front of those different crowds it's, it's a lot of fun and then you go from let's say kansas and you go into duke and uh they got a smaller crowd and they're just as loud so it's it's just really cool being able to see the different gyms can you remember the worst thing you've been called or the funniest thing even that you've been called on the basketball court no i had a couple fans from west virginia that were that were really big on yelling at me but <laughs> other than that uh, no no not really I saw that you were getting uh, compared to Larry Bird a fair bit. Um, yeah. That's mainly in the looks yeah. looks department. I mean, big man that shoots as well. Um, has that followed you around a fair bit? Yeah. Um, the story behind that was I used to have a buzz cut with no facial hair. Yeah. And it was first 20, 21 years of my life. I just refused to grow my hair out. Decided to grow it out uh, after my freshman year, going into sophomore year of college. Um, people... Like we were talking about, the media shows up to practice, and they start taking pictures of me because they hadn't seen me in six months, and yeah. they're making all these uh, crazy comments about Larry Bird. So I was like, whatever, like I just let it go. And then getting into football season, going to a football game, I decided to wear a Larry Bird T-shirt just to <laughs> let them have it, and uh, and it just kind of blew up from there, and I. Uh, buzzed my hair off at the end of that year and then grew it back out i've been growing it for about two years now yeah and it's it's what's, followed me what's everywhere. the plan with that do you just uh, it's, seeing what it's, happens uh, yeah when i wake up it's uh you know that's how i'm feeling uh, <laughs> right. so, for so last, tomorrow you could just be with yeah. buzz and no hair yeah the last two years i've i guess i've felt good about it so i just kept going yeah but uh yeah the beard and the hair are gonna stay until i decide it's time to shock yeah. everybody again have you been told about the uh the rules around playing in the finals for the wildcats with beards uh no so um i mean i'm pretty sure they'll still do it is that as soon as the final starts no one's allowed to touch their beard and so they grow out these nasty beards because nice. i don't think bryce does it because you know i think he likes to keep it looking keep it pretty, clean. Keep it pretty <laughs> fresh but usually by the end of the series like the end of the finals like there's some nasty looking beards but i um, thought you were gonna say the other way around yeah, to <laughs> trim it. i was about to say I, I, i'm sorry but I, i'm not trimming it coach's decision D dmp just yeah. refused to trim well there you go so you'll have a head start on most of the awesome. other guys so yeah. just getting yeah. ready for the grand final series you're already locked uh, in I guess, uh, <laughs> yeah, that's right um let's go back to um some of your um basketball stuff while i've you know, peppering you with other random shit. Um, uh, playing in a championship game, NCAA, um, NCAA tournament. Um, t tell us about that sort of tournament run and, and the sort of feeling around the team and um, what that's like as a, as a college player. Yeah, so about uh, two and a half, three weeks before selection, uh, we lost to Pittsburgh at home. Probably weren't going to make the tournament, go and win Tons of games on the road, Virginia Tech, Louisville, overtime games, uh, getting down to the wire, go to Duke, win, beat Syracuse at home on senior night, and go to the ACC tournament feeling pretty good. And uh, win a game, lose to Virginia Tech. So now we're just sitting around on Selection Sunday. Uh, we think we're going to get in because of the Duke game. We get in, and we're, we're just excited to be there. And we go in thinking, you know, we're, it's kind of weird to say, but – we're the underdogs at being in North Carolina because everybody wants to play us, but yep. we, we felt like we were the people that were the underdogs and went in, just played really well. Uh, we finally just bought in, and we, we played unbelievable that whole run. Get to the national championship, and 
when you when you're at the national championship, you get your own hotel with all your fans and people are everywhere. So for the four different schools that were blue, you got everybody with a different hotel. People are walking around. It's it's really cool, and uh, probably seventy five thousand people at the games. Uh, you're going to shoot around. You're going to practice. There, people are walking down the street in New Orleans and. You're just, it's just really, it's really cool to see all the different college fans. And then you run, it's a big social event. So you see a lot of college coaches from other teams. You see a lot of former players from different places and you get to the game. There's celebrities everywhere. Um, there's you know, all kinds of people that are just out there watching because it's such a big event. And uh, for me to be able to play in both games, uh, let alone just one of them, I was, I was super excited and it's uh, definitely a cool experience to ever go to. You got so close in the championship game. Have you gone back and watched that no. since? <laughs> I don't think I ever will watch it. But, uh, yeah, we, uh, we we got really close. We had a really good lead at half. They came out hot. Uh, we, we, we had we, – so we, we really played five guys. Uh, we had our starting five. And a couple guys in foul trouble. A couple guys were hurt. Uh, a couple guys were, were down. And they just came out second half, and they played really well. What's it like after a game like that? Because college is a finite end like you. You kind of play so many years at college. It's not like a professional season where there's next year, next year. When that game finished, you unfortunately lost and the team was gone. You moved halfway around the world. All that was about to happen. What was it like in the aftermath in the locker rooms and the days and months after that game? Yeah, the, the aftermath of that day is, is pretty quiet. But, um, you know, it was. it's one of those things of like, it's rare to even get to that game, so you have to kind of sit back at where we were at the, after our Pittsburgh game and just think about how lucky we are to be there. And uh, it was it's one of those things where, for me, I was only on a team that couldn't come back, and everybody else could, and uh, they all have that second chance that they're, they're going at right now. But it's so hard to get back. It's so hard to be in that game. I, I was in college for five years, and I didn't think I'd ever even make it to the 16 So just uh, that – that possibility of getting back there is very rare and I think they're all going to be so appreciative of what we did last year but having them having that second that opportunity for another chance uh, I think it it, it kind of helped push them into this off season. Are you still in touch with the team do you still yep. feel like you're part of it from down here? Yeah so I, I still talk to quite a few of them uh, coach and staff um, it's I definitely don't feel like a part of it because I'm across the world and the games are at 8 a.m. <laughs> for us, but uh, I definitely uh, keep in touch. I, I watch from, from afar, and I'm definitely supportive. It's um, a different thing being a basketball fan in Australia because um, usually uh, – so I spend some time living in the States, and you go watch basketball at a bar, and you have a beer and have some pizza or whatever. In Australia, you like wake up and have a coffee and, and watch basketball. It's such a different, um, yeah. uh, a different vibe. Do you keep an eye on the NBA as well? Uh, not as much. Um, for me, I if I'm going to look at NBA stuff, it's probably going to be people I've played against, played with, uh, people that I know. Uh, it's more of just looking at their individual stuff. I don't care about the standings or yep. who's winning what. I just go look and see how people are playing and what they're doing. Uh, college is more about the teams and who's winning, who's losing. I played a lot of those guys for many years, so getting to see how they're doing different schools, that kind of stuff. But I think I'd pay more more attention to college. Yeah. So have you been following the um, Sacramento Kings lighting the beam into the sky when they win games? No. Do you know anything about this? No. So the Sacramento Kings, obviously, for the last 20 years have been mediocre at best. But um, this season they decided to do a thing where every time the team wins, the stadium just launches a beam into the sky. Like it's this big, bright purple beam. I'm like obsessed with it. I think it's the best sort of thing going around, like a, like a celebration thing. Um I'm surprised it hasn't made. It's like the most viral thing I've seen on basketball Twitter the, uh, the last. You haven't seen it? No. I would encourage you to go have a look. Okay. I, I, I might have to go look at it. I might. I, I would recommend maybe if the Wildcats did like a red beam into the sky after at the top of RAC. I reckon that'd be awesome. I'd get around that. After every time Brady makes a three, we'll just light up the sky. Yeah. yeah. How do you feel about the um the smoke that goes? Awesome. Off? Yeah. It's cool. <laughs> yeah. It's very cool. Yeah. yeah. There's so like the funny thing about that is just there's literally our one person's job yeah. just to stand just there to and like read it. it click the button <laughs> and there's sometimes a misfire sometimes they miss it but do yeah. they ever click it on a long two yeah they do really? yeah i think you have to obviously look at the ref to put up the three but if they maybe just aren't watching the ref and they're watching the player so if you're involved in a blowout win you can just trick with them put your line on that foot in the line <laughs> and see if they catch it or not 
But then I would lose a point. (laughs) 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 Um, Talk to us about uh, moving to Australia and how that process worked at the end of your college career. Um, I was saying to the guys earlier, when I used to be at the Wildcats and I was manning the Facebook page, sometimes you'd get videos sent in from um, people playing around the world. just like, hey, here's my mixtape. Consider me to bring me over. Um, I assume you didn't send in a video of your highlights. I didn't. (laughs) How did that work for you coming over to Perth? Uh, it was uh, it was also another weird process. Uh, I went to uh, summer league. I did the whole working out for different teams in the summer, and still didn't know what to, what I was gonna do. I decided I just wanted to stop playing all these games and actually know what's gonna happen to me, and not just be hopeful. And eventually, nothing happened for me. So I decided I wanted to reach out to other other places, and nobody believed me. It was uh, one of those like oh. The NBA is saying he's going to be in the NBA. Other overseas people are saying he's going to be in the NBA, but the NBA is not actually putting me in the NBA. So I'm in this weird pickle of where I I, I just want to, you know, reach out to other places and go somewhere, but nobody was believing me. And I eventually did some Zoom calls with different teams, and that's when the word got out that maybe he's actually being serious. So uh, JR and Danny reached out to me and uh, – Got on a Zoom call with them. Uh, I had wanted to come here. Um, I knew uh, – I didn't know him, but I played against uh, Mooney, who played here, and I uh, saw how he did. So I decided I wanted wanted to come into this league, and I didn't realize I'd end up playing for the same team. But uh, I, it was it's, it's, it was good. It was a good good fit, and I, I just decided let's do it and signed and moved in like two weeks and i've been here ever since right did you know much about the nbl and basketball in australia before coming down no i didn't know much um i just knew a couple of the teams uh some of the players that had been through or had played through the league um but no i didn't i didn't know much at all and were you dead set on getting down to australia or were there other parts in the world that you were seriously considering? i was uh considering anything but uh when i i got my few offers of where to play i decided i wanted to come here mm. so when you were saying people didn't believe you they didn't they didn't believe that you were you're pursuing other things like outside of the nba they just yes. thought now nah, he's he's only going to play nba yes right. yeah yeah so um it, like i said it was it was a weird situation because overseas people were hearing i was going to be in the nba nba people were saying he's going to be in the nba but yet nobody was taking that chance on me right. so i decided just to Mm. go somewhere figure out what's going to happen front foot it go make money go yep. play and uh I, I just was was tired of playing the waiting game and tired of playing all, all the games that they were they were putting yep. on us so i just wanted to want to do something and it was it was a good fit and um, i'm excited about my decision and I'm, i've been loving it yeah is nba still part of your goals to get get back and yeah in America um, and playing? yeah i mean that's i think that's a goal for everybody um for me uh my goal is to maximize the amount of money i can make before i have to stop playing basketball yep uh everyone talks about being being a part of a team it's great i love being a part of a team i love winning but at the end of the day i i do this to make money and set myself up for later in life and i am uh i just i just want to Feel wanted. I want to want to win, but I also want to have good money on this on the end of that. And that financial incentive is almost implicitly obvious, but it never gets said. That yes. You're the first athlete I've ever heard yeah. put it in those terms. Do you find that catches people off guard or puts people yeah, off? Yeah, people even when you probably like think you. Yeah, people take that every every different way. But uh, at the end of the day, people people play professional sports to make money. I mean, it's it's a known thing and. Uh, I for me, I love basketball. I love playing it. I love, like I said, I love winning. I love being a part of big games. But uh, now that I'm a professional athlete, I would like to make money, and uh, that's that's my goal. So if it ends up in the NBA, that's great. If not, I'll make money doing something else. Mm. Yep. That's, I mean, it's tr- tricky, especially when you're a college athlete. Everyone knows how mu- how hard they work and how much they, the colleges make and profit from players. Is that a hard thing to struggle with as a black while you're in the midst of that being a college athlete? Um, not as much. I think it's it's getting into kind of that struggle with NIL stuff. Uh, you got guys making more money than others. You got superstars, and then you got guys who make nothing. It's a it's a weird dynamic, but. Uh, 
what's what's cool about where I was at North Carolina, and I even know probably Oklahoma does the same thing. It, it, you you get that stuff off the side. Um, this stuff like basketball. You're when you're at the gym, it's, it's basketball. If you you have a nil agent, you have these other people helping you outside of basketball. It's great, but uh, what what happens on the floor is ultimately going to help off the floor stuff. So really, it comes down to just being being locked in in basketball. Being locked in, we talk about all the time when we've got Australian athletes that are coming up. The decision to either go to college or stay in the NBL. You've experienced both now. In terms of like the scale of the college ecosystem. How does that compare with an NBL locker room and the facilities and the ecosystem of basketball that you've experienced over the past couple of months? Um, it's very different. Um, I would say college, a lot of money goes into the basketball team, a lot of money goes into the football team, especially the schools I, I attended. But uh, for here, I mean, uh, we we have a great facility. We have a basketball court with two goals that work <laughs> perfectly fine. <laughs> so uh, it, yeah, it's uh, we play in a really really nice arena. Um, so I think I think everything here is great. Um, I just think there's there's more money that goes back into it and into, into college, and I think that they it's just kind of how college is, but uh, that they do it for all their sports. But I, I really have enjoyed the way the Wildcats is set up. And in terms of getting into a professional team for the first time and getting acclimated to Perth, are there one or two players on the Wildcats that you've been drawn to and are closer with and have helped you make that transition? Yeah, there's, there's everybody's been great. Um, I, I, I went to the Kings of Leon thing. I took uh, Zunik and Jesse and Nordo was in Kazakhstan. Uh, I, I room with Todd on the roads. Uh, I went to Black Panther too with Tayshawn, so I, I've got a mix of a little bit of everybody. Um, just trying to try to meet everybody, uh, be around everybody outside of the gym. Are you um, gaming a fair bit with Todd? I know he's elite. Yeah, so uh, I don't know. I don't play with Todd. <laughs> he plays some games that I don't enjoy. Yeah. Um, and then he plays Warzone. I'm more of just a multiplayer guy. Yeah. But uh, I do know him and Majuk been getting after the Warzone. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, they got we got a couple gamers on our team. L LT only plays 2K. And right. I don't. I don't play 2K as himself, probably. Yeah. Um, I do. Like, I'm friends with Todd on our Discord channel, and uh, I feel like sometimes after a game it's like 3 a.m and he's online it's like yeah. he's just grinding away yeah so it, todd todd always talks about it whenever like we're on the road uh he he struggles going to sleep after games and yeah. i don't, don't know why like i'm super tired i'll fall asleep anywhere but uh when we're we're on the road he'll pull out his gaming laptop and he'll be up <laughs> yeah. however long i don't yeah. know i fall asleep <laughs> yeah yeah it's good um what about the uh the fans like the crowds at college games are yeah, like you said, they can go pretty crazy. Um, how have you found the Perth fans and, and compared to around Australia? I think it's very good. Um, the Perth fans, obviously, we have probably one of the bigger gyms, um, but I I see almost all the places we're playing filled up. Uh, fans have been really good. Everybody kind of has their own thing they do. You go to Tasmania or Melbourne, and they they got their little clapping things. Yeah. So, I mean, everybody has their own thing. It, it's been good. Um yeah, I would say just for college, uh, you got a lot of kids, a lot of students, and for here, we just have just a lot of fans, and uh, I think you know it, it's very comparable. Um, Perth has been been awesome, and mm. I've been to a lot of bad bad colleges that have <laughs> no fans, so this is, this is a lot of fun going yeah. to every game with a lot of fans. All right, speaking of fans, we do have a few. We'll let you go in a minute. We have a few listener questions to the show. I said that you're coming on, and um, so a few people reached out. Um, we'll start with this one from Nick Tan seventy seven. Is there any significance behind the number forty five? Yes. Um, so I was thirty five at Oklahoma. Right. Uh, I don't know why I was when in high school uh, we only had a few numbers available. So I wore thirty five. My brother wore thirty two. Um, go to college. I might as well just keep the same number. Not that big of a deal. Uh, wore thirty five. Played really well. Transfer and Bob McAdoo is <laughs> right. yeah. North Carolina. Yeah. Well, his son Ryan McAdoo was on the team. So kind of a legacy thing. Yep. He wore thirty five. Right. He's already been there for four years. I obviously wasn't going to take it anyways, but, <laughs> I mean, he's a legacy of Bob, so you got to honor that. Yep. So I decided, you know, 45 would be great, and the cool part about 45 was that my brother, 
was in his sixth year at a D2 school, currently wearing 45. And my dad wore 45 in college as well. Cool. Nice. There you go. Came full circle a bit. Yeah. Um, I was just thinking, um, actually, we'll, we'll go to this question and then I'm going to ask the question about um, uh, UNC. Uh, this is from Jacko to McDonald. Who recruited you to join NC as a super senior? Also, can you explain what a super senior is? So uh, I believe it was uh, Brad Frederick, Coach Brad Frederick, that reached out to me and uh, first got in contact with me. And then it, from there, it was me and Coach Davis. But, uh, yeah, I think it, the first person to reach out to me was, was Coach Fred, and we had a Zoom call, and it was the whole staff, and it was, it was a really good, really good phone call. And then we kept in touch for the next two, three days and before I committed. And uh, what was the second part of that question? Uh, can you explain what a super senior is? Super senior. Um, I feel like super senior term just kind of jumps around for anybody. Um, I guess I was a super right. senior. Oh, so it's not an official title? I mean, I, I can explain super senior. So I'd say like a super senior is like somebody that you graduate and then you have a hard time like letting go. And like <laughs> you keep going back to where yep. you're, you are like you are. And it's like it really pertains to like high school a lot. So right. Like you're, you go go to college where you keep coming back, hanging out with your friends that are still in high school. Yeah. You're always around. I feel like that's kind of like a super senior. Right. But yes, I was super senior because I was <laughs> in school for five years. So, so yes. Okay. Um at, is there a lot of Michael Jordan stuff going around at, at your at UNC? Yeah. Is it just like shrines so, to him everywhere? Or? So all of our clothes are Jordan. Shoes yep. were Jordan. Um, there's a different for the player of the years in our hallway. There's different uh, about their accolades and pictures. Uh, a lot of like a lot of Michael Jordan stuff. Um, I wouldn't say there's shrines or <laughs> fountains or anything. Yeah, but I just imagine like yeah, just fountains. But I think there's stuff. there's a lot of. I mean, we had a lot of good players. Uh, Tyler yep. Hansborough, James Worthy, Phil Ford, a lot of a lot of guys that were player of the years. Antoine Jameson, Vince Carter, we had guys that that just were dogs. And yep. Did so any of those guys, stuff. older guys, come back in the season you were there? Did you meet any of those guys? I've met quite a few of them. Uh, yeah, Tyler Hansborough's there quite often. Psycho T. Yes, he's there <laughs> all all summer. What's all he doing summer. now at the moment? He lives in Chapel Hill and he does a podcast like this. Right. Yeah, wow. So uh, I I think he's just. Hanging out, yeah, which is really cool. <laughs> yeah, was cool. And uh, I met uh, Antoine. I met Vince. I met uh, actually met Michael Jordan once. It was a weird experience. <laughs> it's, it's, it's super cool. It's it's very cool. Did you know who you were? Like, yeah, he was. He watched the game, and uh, yeah, he was. He watched us play, and he talked to us afterwards. Um, a lot of the former players from like the sixteen, seventeen teams that went to the national championship. Uh, they uh, they they're back playing against us, so it was, it was it was a lot of cool. It's very very cool to see how many people want to go back, and now I get to be a part of that. So I get to go back, and then I get to be on the team with the older guys. So that'll be fun. Yeah, side by side with MJ. Um, one last question from listeners: uh, Ty Galson, would you look at playing for Perth next season? Yeah, I, w- I wouldn't mind playing <laughs> anywhere. Um, <laughs> yeah, for me, I. I just really focus on this season, see how it goes, and see if they want me back. See how I how I end up playing, and uh, we'll we'll go from there. Um, for for right now, it's just, just basketball. Yeah, that's not, not really a fair question yeah. to be what, honest. Like, what yeah. you say, oh nah, this place yeah. sucks. I'm One out. quick thing on that: you <laughs> said the NBA teams weren't that interested six months ago. In terms of where you're at now, obviously focusing on focusing on the season. Are there certain things in the back of your head in terms of feedback that you got a few months ago in terms of working on? aspects of your game does that enter your mind at all at the moment or no. is it all just about winning games no um for me uh, i made a decision to come here uh, i want to want to play here i want to want to produce i want to play well and i don't know where i'm going to be one year two years three years from now so i'm just going to enjoy it while i'm here um a lot of the nba stuff it, it's a dream you, you want to be there but i don't have to be there I can I can play basketball and have a very successful career, a su- 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 successful life, and be perfectly fine. Go hang out with Psycho T and yeah, go into Psycho T. That would be fun. Be on the podcast. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, all right. That's uh, we'll, we'll we'll leave it. Thanks. Uh, thanks for coming on. Um, if you do want to get in touch with us, Backchat underscore Basketball on Instagram. Uh, you can also email us hello at backchatpodcast.com.au. Anything final from you, Ben? Before we let Brady go? No, I think we need to 
hunt down Psycho T and get him on the show <laughs> now. Yeah. You got a game tomorrow night um, here in Perth. Uh, who are you guys playing? I have Adelaide. Adelaide. Pink game. Breast cancer oh, game. Oh, pink game. That's yeah. huge. It's always it's always a big deal. Did you um uh, like were you briefed much on that before like with the build up of of the pink game? Like, uh, did, we, or is it just had like a lady come by and talk to us about yeah. how yeah they are affected is, by it? Was that Trev's wife? Trev Gleason's wife? Cause that um, she'd be in Canada though, right? Yeah, I didn't know if uh, apparently I thought she might be coming into Perth at know. some at some point. Um, but yeah, they are, they are. Trevor Gleason, the last coach, his wife was sort of um, uh, crucial in, in starting the pink game. But yeah, it's an awesome thing. Like it will you'll look out in the crowd and they'll just be pink everywhere. Like oh, cool. Yeah, so it is. It's co- it's a cool thing that they do over at the Wildcats. Um, all right, Ben. Maybe we'll see Greg. Maybe Psycho T next week. <laughs> I think Greg's <laughs> on the bench permanently now. Yeah. <laughs> all right. Thanks, guys.